Republican lawmakers in Ohio have proposed a bill that would require women seeking abortions to choose whether to have the tissue from the abortion either buried or cremated. And this is according to their uh, Columbus Dispatch. Now, State Representative Robert McCauley, who is a supporter of the bill, said, quote, Today we stand for the voiceless. Today we stand for the dignity of the unborn. Oh, boy. So uh, there's a lot of issues with this uh, legislation. But before I get into that, I want to ask, whatever happened to tissue donation? I mean, why, you know, why not actually use the tissue for something useful to help people who are already alive? There's really nothing you can do for that donated tissue. It's not alive anymore. Literally, you have two choices now. Either uh, uh, cremate it or bury it. And of course, there's associated costs to that, and I'm going to get into that as well. But when it comes to tissue donation, you know who does that? Planned Parenthood. How dare they actually use fetal tissue to, you know, help people who are already alive? Now, what things do, uh, sort of things do fetal tissue actually help to go to? I'm glad you asked. Um, it's, uh, it goes to things like uh, helping Parkinson's, I believe, uh, and other diseases. Other genital... Uh, genital? <laughs> wow. Wow, man. It doesn't go to genital diseases. L let's just say that. Um, genetic diseases. Stuff that's passed down. Fetal tissue can go to research to help either delay or eliminate those diseases. It's very useful in the medical field. So it makes sense to have tissue donations. But see, they don't want that. They don't want tissue donations. They don't actually want people to donate the tissue. They instead, well, let's just go to uh, what they uh, would actually do if abortion uh, providers didn't comply with the woman's choice when it comes to whether or not they're remember they've given them a choice to either force them into cremation or a burial you don't get the choice to donate so what if they choose to donate well if an abortion provider fails to comply with this choice they would actually be charged with a first degree misdemeanor and could spend up to six months in jail women seeking the procedure would then be required as well to state their preferences in writing, which would be then kept in state records. What's going on here? I mean, literally, they're having a questionnaire. Would you like to have your uh, burial or cremation for your clump of cells? And you're thinking, no, come on, man. Yeah, abortion's murder. Abortion's murder. <laughs> you, you know, according to the CNC, 82... 89 to 92% of all abortions happen to the first trimester. That's prior to the 13th week of gestation. So yes, literally, you're asking women to have a, 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 a funeral, a burial, or a cremation for a literal clump of cells. That's insanity. What are we doing? Well, that's... Here's what they're doing. They're trying to eliminate abortion. Um... For example, the provider, not the person getting the abortion, but the provider would be forced to pay for whichever procedure the patient chose. Cremations can cost about $1,100, but reportedly can be ordered for about $700 in Ohio. Oh, look at that, a discount. Burials, however, well, they can cost about seven grand. Huh, as opposed to freeing tissue donation, which is what Planned Parenthood does. Hmm. Free versus, well, you can't take the free option anymore if this passes. Now you have to pay as a provider. Well, that has a couple of effects. See, this is what, this is kind of the heart of the matter. This is extra regulation put in by big government to put abortion providers out of business. And it's these expenses is the way that they're trying to do it. You see, not only do women pay for their own abortions because of the Hyde Amendment, that bans all federal money to goes to abortion, it's out of pocket. But now you have a, a, a bill that's 
a proposed bill to charge providers for the cremation or burial of aborted fetal tissue. Now, what's that going to do to the cost of an abortion? It's going to hike it. Wouldn't it make it more expensive? Well, that would cause fewer women to be able to get an, uh, an abortion. And, of course, fewer providers willing to be providers of abortion. And the sad thing is that this has actually passed in two states. According to RH Reality Check, similar measures have already been passed in Arkansas and Indiana, and Wisconsin lawmakers are also considering such a bill. This is an example, it's a great example, of people using legislative tricks to deny women reproductive rights. Since they can't win on Roe v. Wade, they've, been, they've resorted to chipping away at abortion rights as much as they can by making it inaccessible, by putting in ridiculous rules, stuff like admitting privileges and hallway size requirements. It's all in an effort to make abortion inaccessible. Sure, it's legal, but it's going to be inaccessible to you. Now, ironically, the only people that it won't be inaccessible to are the rich. And even if it becomes illegal, which is most likely not, rich people will always still be able to go to another country to get an abortion. So this has the double impact of hitting poor women. Poor women who wouldn't be able to afford abortions in the first place if this, something like this passes. It's amazing what they're doing. And look, it, you know, if you don't think that there's a war on women's reproductive rights and female body autonomy, you are, you're not paying attention or you're complicit.